We're on day two of circular motion, and today we're going to look more at forces that cause the centripetal motion. So we're doing number five here, and it says, a ball on the end of a string is cleverly revolved at a uniform rate in a vertical circle, so that's this way, um, of 85 centimeters. If the speed is 4.15 meters per second and its mass is 0.3 kilograms, that's why it's clever because in order to maintain a constant rate uh, in a vertical circle, it's like impossible. So that's why it says cleverly. All right, but they want us to calculate the tension in the string when the ball is at the top of its path and then when it's at the bottom. So the first thing I'm gonna do is list my givens. So this is number five in case you were wondering. All right, so there's my givens. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw my free body diagram. So I segmented mine into two parts. I, I look at the top first. So when my object's at the top, what forces are keeping it in the circle? Well, weight down and the tension. So those two things are keeping this object in the circle. Well, the circle is down here. This is where in physics we choose our reference points, right? So I know that according to the Cartesian coordinate system, these are negative. However, if I say and I state that the center of my circle is the positive direction, then these are actually both positive. And the reason I wanna do that is because they're both con collectively contributing to the center seeking force, right? They're keeping this object in this circle. So collectively, I'm saying, well, really, what's the sum of forces, weight, and tension, which are providing centripetal force? All right. The question's asking me to find the tension. So tension would be Fc minus W, W being weight. If I go back, well, F equals Ma. And in this chapter, A equals V squared over R. So I can substitute V squared over R in for A and get F equals MV squared over R. I'm gonna plug that in. T equals MV squared over R minus, and in place of W, I'm gonna put MG. So now it's just a matter of plugging these things in. So I get T equals Yep, you can see it, 0.3 times 4.15 squared divided by the radius of 0.85. Remember, order of operations. So I'm going to square the velocity and then multiply by the mass. Don't square the entire top. That's a big no-no. And then I'm going to subtract 0.3 times 9.8. When I do this, I get 3.14 newtons. All right, so that's at the top. We now need to look at what happens when this object changes position, is now at the bottom. So here's the B. So at the bottom, I actually have tension up and weight down. All right. The center of the circle is now up here. So if I orient the center of my circle to be the positive direction, then tension is now positive and weight is negative. So my summation of forces is a positive tension minus a W equals FC. So to solve for tension, tension equals FC plus W. I make the same substitutions that I made down here. So T is equal to MV squared over R plus MG. Now right away, you'll notice the difference. This one, tension has weight being subtracted, but at the bottom, it's having weight added. Because you have to think about it, the tension is keeping that object in the circle and it's holding up the weight. 
So tension is going to be much greater. Well, let's find out how much greater down here. T equals 0.3 times 4.15. Same thing again. Order of operations. Make sure you follow it. When I do all of that, I get my tension is 9.02 newtons at the top. So clearly, the tension is greater at the bottom.